So this episode is number six on our street stock build. We are putting tubing in. We got a couple of them we're gonna do. We're gonna start with the halo over the top of our head for the roll cage. I wanna show you the plan on this one right quick. So we're gonna take a 100 inch piece of tube. It's gonna take just a little bit more than eight foot to do what I need to do right here. Um, we're gonna bend from the center out, 10 and a half inches both ways to the edge of the bend starting. We're gonna do 90 degrees here, 90 degrees here. That's gonna make it 31 and a half inches center to center for our halo. And then I'm gonna be 32 inches inside to inside from the back main hoop to the front tube right here. That's gonna be 32 inches. We're gonna leave this long right here using that 100 inch piece. We're gonna get several extra inches by doing that. And then after we lay it up there and get the layout and stuff and make sure that it lines up like we want, we're gonna take and we're gonna bend a 45. We're gonna lay it up here on top of this main hoop to figure out exactly where we wanna cut that 45 bend in on that tube. So that's the plan for the first one. We got several more we're gonna do besides this one. So definitely wanna stick around. Let's start getting that tubing ready. Lock her in. Go. This stuff right here, buddy. mouth on this one end right here that's this corner is going right there um, but now that one over there of course I'm gonna I'll use my pattern here for the 45 and we'll figure out where to bend it but I'll tell you what this right here now this is where one person working alone can really get challenging and I cannot remember how I did the last one but I know how I'm gonna do this one um, so here's what I'm gonna do let me get this out of here. I'm going to take a tape measure right here. Yep. And so I know the frame's sitting level, everything's level, we're building level, yada yada yada. So here is what I am going to do. I'm just gonna let that hang down. And that thing is exactly, golly, 84 inches, seven foot on the money. Yeah. Alright. So that jumper right there is 84 inches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my T and clamp it up and just make me a leg. Uh, so that was 84 inches. And like right here in this corner, that is 38 and a half. Now I gotta do that. So 84 minus 38 and a half is 44, 45, 45 and a half inches. Alright. So I'm just gonna put my tip 45 and a half inches off the top of this. And I'll have me a sand. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, I don't see why not. Money, right there. Okay, so now I've got a plane front to back. Then I'm gonna turn around and I'm going to plant a piece of plate steel over here. I do remember doing this before. A couple of times, a couple of places, different ways. And it's not going to be perfect because your fish mouth might kind of bump into it, but that's okay. You just got to get close as you can. Dead gun close. All right. So now I've got me two points and I'm just focusing on this corner and hopefully I don't have to have seven hands to do this. Let me get my 
my magic marker. And get my cheeto tube here. All right, you get in that pocket. And you come here. And you get up here. And don't fall. You sit right there. Oh, well, yeah. A little bit flimsier than I would like, but hey, let's go with it, right? That's, yeah, that's really flimsy. Probably, like, it would be not like, if you just cut a piece of steel to, like, put in there and cut off, that would be ideal. Well, that sits up there exactly like what I want. So, that works. There's my mark. There's my cheater. Lay it over top. I want to... The reason this is over this edge is... I'll, I'll show that after we put it back up. I'll show y'all why we're doing this, okay? Alright, so I got me a mark on the cage now. We're cooking now. We're cooking. Leave all this in place because we've got to sit back up here and mark it's trimming. Y'all see, I got it been in there. We're going with that. Right, wrong, or indifferent. We're going with that. Ooh, that's looking good. Don't take shortcuts on making those mouths, y'all. Gotta have them right. This is definitely not a one-man operation right here. comes up and I want them to line up. I want them to be on the same plane. And there's probably a better way to do this. But this is going to get us really, really close. Really close. And kind of, I can kind of tell. Let's go just a hair. Dash bar in. It's going to be one tube goes all the way around 
Um, that's the easiest way to do it. I agree. Jamie Lewis and me were talking about this, and he told me, Jason, that's by far the best way to do it. It'll just control all of your build. You get that thing in place, and then just everything locks in after that. Uh, makes total sense to me, so we're going to do it that way as well. One tube, it's going to come in right here, it's going to go down, it's going to turn, go across. I'm going to set 18 inches of opening. I've got a mark here. I'm going to put my tube below that mark right there. So I've got 18 inches of opening right here. I set the camera up over here where y'all can see how that, the reason that I've offset that halo to this top, you can see where that bend is and how that this tube here, I put in alignment with that 15 degree down leg right there. Um, that's because I'm going to put a down tube right here. So I'm going to double this and put some joiners in between them. And so I make a real strong column right here. My head's right here, we want a real strong column as far as something coming in this way or like an impact on top or whatever. But those tubes are gonna be in alignment right there. It's gonna look good, uh, it's gonna be stout, and that's gonna go right into the top. And of course, all of this will be bridged up. There's a lot more tubes going in right here. There's a lot of bridging going in right here. Like, it's gonna be beefy. All right, so that's going to come down through here. How far am I going? Well, I'm going all the way to the front of that floor pan, um, which is a long ways. <laughs> but yeah, uh, about 48 inches. So I'm going to take and I'll turn it. And the front of the tube itself is going to be the front of the floor pan right here. Those two are going to match. And so that turn, so that turn is going to be a little bit, you know, it'll turn a little bit short. And then the wall of the tube is going to match my floor pan here, which means that my leg coming up is going to be sitting right in here, just a little bit back, because it's going to have to be where the turn starts. And that tube is going to match this tube. They're going to be in alignment. So the top tube, see, is gonna run down through there and then that's gonna be just butted up into it and then turn around and this top tube here will come down into it. Now, whether it joins in the middle or join it here and put a second tube here, I'm gonna wait until I get it in. It'll make sense as we build it. And that's why I said you get these main two or three you know, pieces into your cage and the rest of it will just like snap together like log Lego blocks at that point. Um, but 48 inches, turn, then we're going to go across, we'll leave it long going across and then we'll cut it off to what makes sense over there when we do that side. So I got 54 inches, so I got 48 and 54. We'll add another 6 inches for the bend and stuff. So that's 60 and 48, that's 108 and at 108 I will bend it in the middle and have plenty long, plenty over there. Let's get busy. All right, I got my piece of tubing bent right here. Just left it way long on one end where it'll just run out. Um, and I put me some crutches in here where that I can sit this thing up there and hopefully it all works out. I've got it level all, on all three points, ready to go. So I'm gonna take and put this thing up here, figure out where to trim it. Hopefully when you see how I lay it up here, it's going to start making sense. Alright. That's going to sit there like that. And then this is going right there. Alright, so first step, get it completely flush with the front of this box and level. That's going to be able to let me mark, cut, and put my mouth on the tube back there. That's flush there, and it is definitely over the wrong way. <laughs> All right, so I need to 
slide that over, hopefully without it falling off. Try again. Oh yeah, I did that exactly right. I did that exactly right. Yep, that looks good. That looks good. Okay. So now I'm gonna take and mark my tube right here like that. And then I'm gonna mark my tube like that right there, and then I'm gonna mark it a half inch back for my mouth. An inch and a half tube, you mark back a half inch for your mouth. That's how you do one third. One third of the diameter of the tube. You cut it off a third of the diameter of the tube longer, and then you cut your angles back in it. That's how you make your mouth. It's not hard. After you do it a while, you get, it gets pretty easy. Okay. Get this thing down. Grab it up here where I... square back I needed it and you can see where we came out when we came out right here that put us flush to that outside rail that was what we did there right so we're gonna put it down to right here flush to that outside rail straight up we're gonna make sure so got everything squared up it's working out just like it's supposed to so anyway I'm looking and I want it to be right where the turn starts. So that's where the down leg is going to go. That's where that top bar is going to come in and all join up right there. To right there. Okay. Make sure this is sitting level. That's money. So let's cut. We need a 22 inch tube let's see 22 inch is the opening it's flat on the bottom then i add a half of an inch which is one third of the diameter so i need to cut it 22 and a half so that i can mount it out and i've got some tube in right here here's some right here All 
All right, I'll, sh all right, I'll show y'all. So, like here's my 22 inch line right here, and I went a half inch, which is one third the diameter, up. I marked the two sides where the mouth was, where they opposite each other. I took a 45 and cut a 45 through to leave a half inch gap in the middle, which is one third the, of the tube. So an inch and a half, I'm gonna come back a half inch and then turn around and I'm gonna leave a half inch. That gets you really, really close when you're making your mouths on your tubes to fit up. So then you see all I'm doing here is I just taper it out thin on the edges. So I'm just taking, and get on the flat disc, this is a, I always use like a 36 or a 40 grit. You just want a really, really aggressive flat disc for this. And like this is the type 29, that's the angle. Um, it's not the flat one, it's the one that's got a bevel on it, I think. But anyway, get a good one that has a really thick pad. Like go ahead and pay like $10 for like one of these flap discs in like a 36 or 40 grit. This one here is the Harbor Freight Hercules um, because it's really thick and so you get this big rounded, you know, pad on the flap disc and that makes it really easy to do these, y'all. Whichever one you're using for the tubing, you know, you don't wanna go and just like ruin it, holding it flat on something, wearing it out because then it's not gonna be good for tubing. But you see how that one has shaped? And that's just where I've been doing tubing with it. And then, like I said, all I did was just thin the two edges out and then just rounded the middle. It's done. It's ready. All right. Let me check you one more time. Okay, I like it. We gotta get this side tied in now, and we're not gonna tie it in out at the frame rail. I really, this frame rail right here, right here I don't consider it structural. Um, just like I did the crush, I want a completely separate tube on the inside here, and I want it to be parallel in line on the car. All right, and so this is gonna actually um, run right with the cage down tube right here. It's gonna run parallel up through there. I'm taking my measurements. I've already took, notched out the ends of it, got ready to go. And it sits high, it actually sits high to the frame rail. It sits up here where the, like on top of my pocket over uh, my right rear trailing arm mount. It's gonna be part of how I'm gonna beef up that right rear trailing arm mount. Um, but it does sit level. Um, I just cut it until I got it to zero. So I am going to spot it in, and then we'll be able to run our down tube after that. Let me get this well done. because this is just a little bit proud of the face. Let's see how much. Yeah. So instead of being 22 inches, this one's 21 and three quarters. And that's because at the very top of that tube is slightly above that rail right there, the way that it runs. Uh, which is fine. That's fine. So we'll cut that mouth the two ends and I'll have to cut it an inch longer because it gets a mouth on this end and on that end. So instead of 21 and three quarters, I'll cut 22 and three quarters, put the mouths on it, and throw this in right quick and just get it square. Something I do want to point out, these two tubes are not in alignment front to back because this one um, on the driver's side is back where that curl, that, that 90 degree turn is. So we set it back so that it sits on that outside wall. Well, this one's in that center line of that tube. And so there's about four inches stagger difference between them. It's fine. It's fine. You got all your door bars, everything going on over there. 
The cage has got an offset difference in it. I am just not, you know, concerned with that. On the crush, I was trying to figure out a design to like have all of that stuff exactly squared, exactly parallel. And I think it actually hurt me on the functionality of the car and how long it took me to build it because of that. And I got no gain from it. So offset, it's fine. We're going to let her rip. So I think what I'll do here is this is going to get cut off and capped. And I'll just cut it an inch or two long right now. Um, I'm going to have to make me up some caps and stuff. I'll probably have to go around and put caps on different tubes in places. I won't worry about that right now. Um, but that's good enough. I can go ahead and cut that off and get this out of my way. And then we're going to put this next leg in. Let's see where we're at. I don't want to push it open. I just want it to just... Yep, that's what I'm looking for right there. I want it to just sit there. Oh. Well, that's perfect. figure out which way to go with it. We can do this one of two ways. I've got an offset here between where the corner is over there and where the corner post is right here. I can do this two different ways. I can take, this is the wrong size too, but I'm just showing it, you know, for example. I can take and run on out to this corner and tie into this corner right here. Now my two angles on my bars are gonna look very different from each other. It's gonna look a little bit weird, I think. Or I can take and I can drop it back like that and get them to be exactly the same. And if I come in right here, I'll probably just dog leg that with a piece of inch and quarter right there, you know, um, and do something like that right there. Triangle it in, something like that, if I did do that. But yeah, I can either match them up like that or I can put it out there like that. Which way do y'all think is better? I've seen cars done both ways. I've seen some of these that run way off here to a weird place. Main thing I want is I want to be perfectly in line and either way they're both in line so that I've got a deck piece here and a deck piece here with a seam, you know, in the middle here. Makes it a lot easier to do the deck on the car. So between now and the next video, I'll go ahead and put that tube in. We'll do it one of the two ways. 
Um, I'll go ahead and weld all of this up after I get that one in as well. I kind of want to get the whole cage together before I start burning all of that in. And then I'll work around it, you know, um, as I go. Let's see, what's next? Um, I'm thinking back wall, uh, cross bracing and everything for that. Down tubes on the back of the car. I'll probably build the car out the back and then go forward. I'll probably go forward after like from here back is done. Um, I may not have all of the pedals and everything and stuff, but, uh, but like I said, from here back will be done. And thinking about it, the pedals I will put in before I put all of my door bars in and stuff, just from an ease of like being able to reach and do everything, I'll need to get that knocked out. But yeah, coming along. We got some tunes knocked out on this episode. Hey, I appreciate it. This was number six. Definitely want to be subscribed and have your notifications. Whole lot more on this build because probably two months from now, this thing's going to be on the ground and running. See y'all next time.